I'm back with another rubbish unboxing because that's what I do. Uh, the product's quite cool. It's a, it's another server from HP Pro Liant Pro Liant. I don't even know how to say it. Micro server. So we've got HP installation sheet and some documentation on a CD there. Power cable. Power cable for another country. So it's a very small server. Hence the name, microserver. I'm sure you've probably worked that one out for yourself. Do not eat. So I'll start with the back, because you'll see there's some keys dangling from here. And that's to lock the front, so people can't get to the hard drives inside. So we've just got one big fan, which sits behind the hard drives, which I assume go vertically. Um, we'll get to that in a few minutes power thing um, it looks like another little fan got two PCI Express slots down here two USB ports gigabit Ethernet or at least I hope it's gigabit I'm pretty sure it is VGA which is always helpful and eSATA Moving around the front we've got a space where you could put a disk drive I think it's a half height thing um, I'm probably not going to bother. We've got four USB ports there, a power button, and then we've got two lights. One for disk access usage and one for uh, network usage. So I've got the keys. I bet this thing's not even locked. There we go. So the server only came with one gigabyte of RAM inside, which is not enough for some of the things I want to do. So I've got four gigabytes here. I'm going to swap the RAM over. This was like £17 from Amazon, Kingston, 4 gigabytes. I'll put the model number in the description. To get to the components inside, what you need to do is take out the two screws here um, in the little blue things. And you'll notice there's a very helpful Allen key in the door on the back, uh, which can be used to just unscrew those. And then the tray will lift out. Once the two screws are loosened, you kind of have to move this cable out of the way and then pull out the black cable just like plugged in there which gets in the way. The system tray will pull out a bit. Then you get to about here and you need to unplug the other cables that stop it from coming out any further. So I'm going to swap the module RAM that's already in. Very easy to access when the whole motherboard is out of the case and insert the new module. You may need a bit of force to clip the new module in. At the moment I've only got one module, four gigabytes. If this works I'll probably buy another module and have the full eight gigabytes in this thing. So once you've done that it's just a case of sliding back in to the tray and plugging in the cables that you took out. And we've got 4096 megabytes of total memory. I'm now going to install VMware vSphere hypervisor so I can run virtual machines on this thing. I'm going to make use of the internal USB port. It's loading all the files now and what vSphere hypervisor will let me do is install lots of virtual machines onto this server with VMware vSphere hypervisor as the host so you don't need like a full operating system like Windows to do this. The advantages of that is you're not going to have updates every week to install um, there's a smaller kind of attack surface on VMware vSphere hypervisor as opposed to let's say Windows Server 2003 or 2008 or whatever. So now we can choose where to install it. So the choice is the internal hard drive or one of the two flash drives. And again I have this problem, the flash drives are identical. But if I pull this flash drive out, refresh. Now we can choose the right one and put that back in just in case it needs it. So the one that's left is the internal one, we'll choose that. So while we wait for this to install, mini unboxing of a brand new CAT6 patch cable. Why CAT6? Because it's the best one you can afford at the moment. Why red? Because it was the cheapest on Amazon out of all of the colours. So this, I hope I don't need to explain, is to connect it to the network. So once it's booted for the first time, there'll be an IP address on like the main screen. 
and this is what you would use to connect to this server. Now you can see it's been assigned automatically by DHCP, which may be fine in some cases, but if you can't reserve an IP on your DHCP server, usually the router, or if this boots before the DHCP server, this might cause an issue. So if you hit F2, you can log in with root and the password you chose during setup, and this will let you configure various things about this installation. So if you go to configure management network, IP configuration. You can either use dynamic IP and network configuration or set static IP and network configuration. So we're going to choose that one. Um, space to select. So generally the IP is 192.168.0. Or something or point one point something. It depends on your network. So if you go to the IP address in a web browser on another computer, you'll get a link to download vSphere client. Now that's what you need to install. Once it's installed, when it launches, just put in the IP address of the vSphere hypervisor um, server, the username which is root and the password which you configured. Then you'll be presented with the main interface and you can start installing virtual machines. So there we go, the HP micro server. Thanks for watching.